I'm Davey, and I'm awesome, and welcome to Davey's Awesome Stories, where I tell funny stories from my past or go on a rant in an effort to make you laugh. Now see, I've done lots of videos about what it's like being a retail worker or a customer service worker in many regards. Basically overall, it's annoying. And most of what I talk about has to do with how annoying, weird, and crazy all the customers are. But I had somebody this week ask me, don't you work with people that are crazy, annoying, and weird? It's not all the customers. You're absolutely right. See, I got my first job at 14. I'm pushing 40 now. So I've had lots of jobs, and I've worked with lots of people at these jobs. Heck, working in retail or restaurants, you find out very quickly, people come and go. So I thought I would tell you three stories about, yeah, some three very strange individuals I worked with. First one I'll tell you about is from a few years ago. This was a guy, we'll call him Richie. And I know this may be hard to believe, especially if you've watched the videos where I've talked about what it was like when I was single and trying to get women. This guy was way worse at it than I ever was. In fact, it's why I ended up not working with the guy anymore. He got fired for hitting on a girl too much. And most of the time when stuff like that happens, I kind of go like, okay, somebody was being overly sensitive, wasn't that big of a deal, the person didn't deserve to get fired over this. In this particular instance, I don't blame the girl. Because the thing about Richie was every time we had even a semi-attractive woman come work with us, he would ask her out. Now that part, don't see much fault in. You ask him out, they say no, you move on with your life. That's what most of us do, not Richie. When a woman told Richie she was not interested, apparently what he heard was, Oh, she wants me to bring on the charm. And if you ever saw the charm, you'd agree that's not what she was saying. Richie's weirdest thing, though, was when he would ask a girl out the first time, it would be normal. He would just walk up, he'd introduce himself, tell her she was pretty, and ask if she would like to go out with him, and she would say no. What was weird about this is Richie never did it in private. He usually did it in the break room where we were all eating or something. Hint, guys, that's not a good idea. But they would just say no in the break room and the rest of us would awkwardly go back to eating our lunch. It was after that, days leading on, that he would come up to her and start with the pickup lines. And I'm serious, the kind of pickup lines we tell each other to make each other laugh. The kind where we find a list on the internet and we just sit around going like, oh, <laughs> hey, listen to this one. Those kinds of pickup lines, he'd use them and be serious about it. As bad as I've ever been with women, I've never ever used a pickup line in a serious manner like I really thought it was gonna get me somewhere. It was always like something I was telling my actual girlfriend or wife or friends just to make them laugh. In fact, my personal favorite thing was to take it a step further and make it even creepier. I'll demonstrate as I get to his pickup lines. Now let me make it clear. Every pickup line I'm gonna tell you that he said to a girl, he actually said this. For example, the last girl, the one that got him fired. Every other girl before that just got to the point they said, knock it off or I'm gonna get you fired. Within the span of a few days, he walked up to her and said, hey, were you talking to me? Um, no, I wasn't talking to you. Well, then please start. I used that line on my wife, but I did it a little differently. I went, hey, baby, were you talking to me? No, why? Sorry. I hear voices. But now back to Richie. Another day, he walked up to her and said, I think your dad must have been a traffic cop, because you got fine written all over you. Back to how I took a line like that and messed it up for my wife, I went up to her and I was like, Hey baby, was your daddy a garbage man? No, why? Because I want to go through your trash. Back to Richie. The final straw for this poor girl was when he walked up to her and said, Hey girl, if you were a booger, I'd pick you first. Hey baby, if you were a booger, I'd eat you because I eat boogers. But yeah, after this weirdo did this to her over and over and over again, that last line was one that finally made her go to a boss and say, he won't stop hitting on me, I want it to stop. So they made it stop. The next one I'm gonna get to, this was actually a guy I worked with when I worked at a warehouse. I worked there with my best friend, author Ken Lindsay. Author of the Gavin English series and the River Runes, available at KenLindsayBooks.com. This guy was part of the janitorial staff. He creeped everybody out, annoyed a lot of people, like Ken Lindsay, 
Mainly because in Ken Lindsay's case, Ken Lindsay made the mistake of one day getting into a conversation with this guy, we'll call him Chuck, and mentioning that someday he would like to own some horses. Because of this, almost every day, if Chuck saw Ken, he would ask him, Hey, Ken, you get yourself any horses yet? Again, every time he saw him, literally two, three times a week, he would ask him the same question. Hey, Ken, you get yourself any horses yet? In fact, the first time I remember walking by with Ken and hearing it, going, Horses? Before you do that, you might want to move out of the two-bedroom single-wide trailer you share with your wife and kids. I told him someday I would like to own some horses, and he's asked me if I've got any almost every day since. As if I'm going to be like, yeah, yesterday I bought a ranch and some horses. Now that was just something he did that kind of annoyed Ken. What he did that kind of creeped everybody out, he would go around the break room, especially during lunchtime. Some of us started eating our lunches in other places to hopefully avoid Chuck. If you were eating, no matter what you were eating, he had to come up, stare at you, and comment on what you were eating. Now before any of you go like, oh, maybe the poor guy was like very down on his luck and didn't have lunch. No, no, no. The guy was always eating something. Every little break and lunch, always eating something. He was one of those people. So it wasn't that. He was just very weird and awkward about it. And it was never something fancy. It was never like, like for example, I might see somebody eating something that looks really good, like they made a casserole or something and go, oh, what's that? That looks good. And then they would probably just come back by telling me what it is, giving me their recipe and telling me how easy it is to make or something. But no, not this guy, not Chuck. No, Chuck would hover over you and say something like, oh boy, those are some mighty fine looking frozen burritos you got there. Yeah, not kidding, something like a frozen burrito, something that most of us would just look at and go like, uh. Or, ooh, a sandwich, huh? I love sandwiches. Looks good. What do you want the recipe? Bread, mayonnaise, bologna. Maybe a little mustard if you're feeling fancy. Ah, pizza. Looks good. Where's that from? Domino's? Pizza factory? Freshetta. Weirdest one was one lunch hour, Ken Lindsay and I were both doing the same job, so we had to leave a little later than everyone else. And we decided, you know what? Because everybody else has left, the drive throughs shouldn't be that bad. So we rushed over to a Jack of the Box on the street, and we got a couple of Ultimate Cheeseburgers. One of my favorite fast food burgers. You put some pickles on that Ultimate Cheeseburger, and it's just amazing. I love it. So we went over, got those real quick, came back. We're sitting in our break room, eating our burgers. And of course, here comes Chuck. Because that was another weird thing about Chuck. If you took your break or lunch late, at some point he was still gonna pop in and get creepy. Ultimate cheeseburgers, huh? And both Ken and I just kind of sat there, didn't look at him, just eating, going like, yeah. Well, cool, yeah, I'm down. You guys like him, right? And this was the most awkward one. Cause he literally just stood there while we didn't acknowledge him just kept eating our burgers like and then finally he leaves because he was on the clock and I look at Ken and I go was he trying to get us to offer him a bite it's what I was wondering I was gonna let you do it not happening like Joey, Davey doesn't share food. The last one is probably my favorite weirdo I ever worked with. He was actually a really cool guy. I loved being around him. He made me laugh. His name was Derek. And this was when I was 18 years old. I was working at a grocery store and I met Derek on my very first day. We were in the same orientation class together. Orientation class, well, boring was easy. You signed papers, you had somebody lecture you on how wonderful the company is, and you watched really bad videos. Which to most people is torture, but to Davey, it's fun. Bad acting, scenarios that would never ever happen, not in a million years, and of course legal things that they had to get out. But it led to one of the moments that I realized that Derek himself was strange. See, we're in class, we're watching this video about lawsuits and why we need to keep things clean because if customers slip and fall and trip on things, they can sue us, of course. 
And it gave a few scenarios of like if they slipped on water, if they slipped on merchandise, if they slipped on some kind of other debris, what the average settlement for this would be. And I don't remember which one was most expensive. I only remember this because of what followed. Talked about if somebody slipped and fell on water, the average settlement is such and such, and it would end it with, it would take us selling this amount of something to make that back. I remember the example was, it would take 250,000 12 packs of Corona for us to make that kind of money back. At the end of the video, the instructor turns it off and asks if there were any questions. And Derek spoke up. Well, not so much a question, more of a comment. If they want to sell the beer faster, they should put it over by the meat. You know, because people like to drink beer while they're grilling. Yes, because that was the point of the video. Derek would say weird things like that all the time. He would just have a weird comment to go with pretty much anything. Things that were so far out of any kind of a point. Like, obviously the point of that video was don't spill stuff, because if somebody slips and falls, it takes a lot of sales to recover that. That inspired him to give a suggestion on how to push it faster. But I think my favorite moment of Derek was months later, I'm working, developed a couple of work friends, Derek being among them. We're standing around, not doing our jobs, just talking, having the kind of conversations you have when you're ages 18 to 21, which we all were. And this particular day, those of us talking, it was me, Derek, a guy named Tony, and a guy named Alex. And Tony decided to raise up the question that pretty much every group of guys, especially around that age, has asked each other. He asked us, who do we think are the three hottest celebrities out there right now? Keep in mind, this was when I was 18. Tony started it off with his three. Okay, for me, it'd be Selma Hayek, Penelope Cruz, and that one girl from Destiny's Child. Now, some of you may be going, that's Beyonce. Two things. Number one, this was a little bit before she was like the single sensation she is now. And it turned out that that's not who he was talking about. He was talking about Kelly Rowland. Then Alex. Drew Barrymore, Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu. Your three hottest celebrities are the cast from Charlie's Angels? Yeah. I love that movie. Okay. And yes, I threw mine out. I was like, definitely gotta agree with you on Selma Hayek. But then I think I'd have to go with the girl from Dark Angel and the mom from Everybody Loves Raymond. Don't you judge me. Derek didn't have an answer. When we looked at him, he just kind of looked at us awkwardly and went, uh... I'll get back to you guys. And then he walked away, to which we didn't think nothing of. We just figured he had been standing there a while and went, oh, I gotta get back to work, which we all kind of did. A few hours passed. This conversation was around the beginning of my shift, and now we're at close to the end of my shift, last couple of hours. And out of nowhere, I get an announcement over our PA system, Davey, to the customer service counter, you have a phone call on line three, which back then wasn't that weird. Figured it was probably my parents or something because we didn't all have cell phones back then. So if your close family and friends needed to get a hold of you during work, they called your work. Most of us knew to tell them though, if it's not important, leave me alone. So I walk up and I answer the phone. This is Davey, what's up? Okay, well the first one would be Christina Aguilera, then Demi Moore and Amanda Pete. Who is this? What do you mean? This is Derek. Derek, like, the Derek who works here? Yeah. And what about Christina Aguilera? You remember earlier we were talking about the three hottest celebrities? Those are mine. Uh... Okay. Well, they said Tony went home already, but that you and Alex were still there. Yeah, yeah, Alex is still here. Okay, well, you can tell Alex my list, and uh, I'll tell Tony when I see him tomorrow. Uh... Okay. Will do. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Davey. Yeah, he had to go home and put real thought into it and call me at work to let me know what his conclusion was as if this was like a really important conversation that we really had to know. It was just kind of a throwaway conversation. I honestly wouldn't have remembered it if that hadn't happened. So the moral of this story is that yes, in these kinds of jobs, sometimes the people that you work with are strange, weird, and a little stupid too. 
So there you have it. That's my story video this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit that little bell so you get notifications when I post new videos, and leave a comment. Tell me about some weirdos you worked with. Tell me if you are that weirdo. Love you guys.